got Ron and Kirsten for this week's edition of Ask Ron. So our first question is from Judith Roundsville in Wisconsin. And she says, I haven't started doing do. deals yet. I bought home study courses from you. Question, if we take over debt for FISBOs, do we need to be qualified by the bank slash financial institution where the house is currently mm -hmm. mortgaged? Are we going to inform those financial institutions that we are going to take over the Stop. debt? No, no, no. Go back and listen to the green course again. First of all, if taking over debt means you do not qualify. That's what subject to means. You can either assume the debt, and by which you do qualify, or you take it over subject to, of which you don't. And you do not need the bank's permission to do this. You will violate the due on sale clause. Likely they won't call the loan due, but if you use my CYA letter, even if they do, if ever it's been fully disclosed, I've never had them call the, due, the loan due, but please, you don't need the bank's permission, and I don't even contact them. If you contact them, you might just stir up a mess. So it's taking over the debt subject to simply means I'm going to take title to the property and start making payments on the property as I agreed to do by the seller. That way there's no personal liability to you. You will not get the bank's permission to take over a loan subject to, so don't even try that. Okay? Okay, so our next question is from Paul Revere in Florida. Paul Revere. He says, in the last Mentor Magazine, you said I need a realtor in the system to assign an axe contract to the end buyer. Does this mean I need to make a realtor a part of my LLC or just find a realtor that is willing to work with me with no connection to my LLC? All right, well, I've said and many uh, uh, times we've done this before, I'll answer it again, but in Florida you need a, to, a license to assign an option. There are probably several ways you can fix that. Number one, don't ever assign an option. If I lease it and then sandwich lease it out to my buyer, that's not an assignment of option. Uh, two, if I put a purchase and sale agreement on it, it's a purchase and sales contract, that's not an option. So I might be, I might use a lease in conjunction with that. I can assign that because that, that does not specify it in the law as I read it. Number three, if you don't do any of that, what we do is I have a realtor that is not an owner of my LLC, but is an officer of it, and that realtor just gets a piece of every deal that we do where we assign an option only now. That's the only time he gets paid. And he does nothing <clears throat> but sign the agreements going in and, and, and going out. He doesn't own anything, he doesn't really do anything, but he is an officer in my LLC. Okay? All right, so our next question is from David Robinson in Kingsport, Tennessee. Hey, David. He says, hi, Ron, quick question. Can this owner financing technique risk mentioned below by debt guru Dave Ramsey be mitigated? <sighs> Or is it kind of like buying a property subject to where it is what it is and the experts will advise against it? Question is, dear Dave, what's your opinion on buying a house on a land contract? And Dave replies, I would never under any circumstance ever buy a property on a land contract. In some places, this kind of thing is called a contract for deed, but the problem is you don't have the deed. The property is not in your name. You could easily run into a situation where you've paid the balance down for 10 years, then the guy you're paying gets into a car wreck or another kind of financial trouble, and someone slaps a $500,000 lien against the property that's supposed to be yours. Don't pay for property that isn't in your name. Land contracts for contracts for deeds are dangerous for the buyer and just plain stupid. Okay. Well, first of all, Dave and I go back to the beginning of time. I knew him before he was famous. Second of all, I agree with everything he said, but I think he's a little overzealous. He probably was off his meds when he answered that question. Uh, listen, land contract is not my preferred way to buy, no doubt about it. It is true that I don't get the actual deed until I pay it off, but it's also true that I do get ownership legally. And if I'm going to buy on a land contract or a con for deed, uh, contract for deed or an agreement for deed or whatever it's called in your state, I'm going to have a deed put in escrow with instructions to have the attorney record it so that I don't have to chase that person down like Dave is worried about in that arrangement. The truth is, I don't buy on a land contract either unless it's the only way I can buy. If a seller won't sell me the house subject to, which is my favorite way, where I don't have to worry what the seller does or what happens to the seller because title is transferred and I own the house, I'll take it that way. But if they won't, and that bothers them and I still want the deal, then I will offer them a land contract or contract for deed. But again, I'll make sure that my attorney protects my interest. It's all about having a good attorney and then you don't worry, uh, lay awake at night worrying about the things that Dave suggested. Dave's a good guy, don't get me wrong. He's got great advice, but he was, uh, he was having a bad day when he answered that question. <laughs> okay, go ahead. All right, so now we've got Pam from Spring Hill, Tennessee. Hey, Pam. 
I am thinking about owner financing some of my rentals in Florida. Do you recommend holding a mortgage for someone in Florida? If they default, how long does it take to get the house back in Florida? I shouldn't have bought these houses, but that is a hindsight. I see owner financing as the only way to get rid of them. Okay. One is in a poorer neighborhood. All right. Well, first of all, you can do lease options and not do owner financing. That's also a way to get rid of them. In this case, you want to lease option to somebody that has a good chance of qualifying in the not too distant future. How long it takes to get it back in Florida will be months. And um, I don't know how many months, because that depends on your attorney, basically, and how busy the county is where the properties are. At least six, I can tell you that. So if you do own a finance in Florida, you want to get a large down payment or additional collateral and most certainly all the personal guarantees that you can get. I'm very reluctant to do so. I like lease purchases because I can evict them and I do not have to foreclose on them. However, in the last 12 months, I've sold two or three houses with owner financing for various reasons. So it's a judgment call on your part. Safest way, lease option them and not have to worry about foreclosing on them. Okay? All right, so our very last question is from James Baxendale in North Carolina. Oh, let me, let me go back on that just a minute, Kirsten. Oh, okay. If you're going to owner finance, you better do it this year because of January of this coming year, the rules on owner financing are going to change now for all of you listening. And you need to be aware of these rules before you do anything after January of uh, 2014. The Dodd-Frank's kicking in some new regs. In fact, we're having a whole event to discuss this in December here in Jacksonville. It's called our Emergency Seller Financing Boot Camp, uh, December the 12th, 13th, and 14th. So you better check that out with us. And the rules are changing. They're also changing on private lending. So uh, guys, don't do anything without the use of an attorney. But make sure you're up to date on these changes when they happen before you go out here blindly and do things and then find out you wished you had them. Okay? Perfect. Okay, so James in North Carolina. And he said, Scott mentioned several lists that you are mailing to right now in last week's Q&A call. I am curious to know where you purchase your lists. Well, uh, LegrandYellowLetters.com gets us all of our lists uh, for the most part. If it's a specialized list, uh, we go to MelissaData.com. Those two are all the list providers we need. Go to LegrandYellowLetters.com. Tell them what you want to do. they got some really good lists there. If you don't find uh, where, uh, if they don't have it, then just ask them where you think you should go to get it. But uh, uh, MelissaData.com is likely going to be your next stop. That's Melissa, just like the girl's name. All right, so that's it for this week. Okay, see you guys. Uh, make sure you check out the upcoming events now. I've got business management coming up in November and this special event I just described coming up in December and commercial property boot camp. I'm doing it next month here in Jacksonville. It's the last one that I'm going to personally teach. So if you have any interest in commercial property, strongly suggest you get to this one and you have until this Friday at 5 p.m., to call our office and get a thousand dollar discount off of commercial property boot camp so by the time you're seeing this you'll only have a few hours left you can also go to ronlegrand.com forward slash last chance and check it out there you'll get the thousand dollar discount so see you next week